Ari. So we are we were doing simplifying rational expressions before. Now we are simpl now we are solving rational equations. So don't worry about this. Don't write this down. I just want to talk about it. If I have x over 4 plus 1 over 2, and my directions were to simplify. All right, based on what we did last unit, right, what would I have to do in order to simplify this? Um, the greatest common factor? Uh, no, wait, no. Um, you have to, like, find the, like, um, like, like, the greatest common factor of, like, the last term, so that, like, you get, like, the four in the denominator. Good. We want a, we want the least common denominator. We want to create a common denominator. We want to create a common denominator here. And what would be the common denominator? 4. So we'd leave the first one the same, x over 4. And then in order to create the denominator of 4 for the half, we'd multiply top and bottom by 2. So then we would end up with x over 2 over 4. All right. Well, now we're not going to simplify anymore. Now in this chapter, we are solving. So let's say I have x over 4 plus 1 over 2 equals, I don't know, let's say uh, 3x. Say I'm doing this. So now I want to solve. Big difference, right? Here I was simplifying, now I'm solving. Who remembers from Algebra 1? When you're solving an equation with denominators, so when you're solving equations with fractions, we do not want to create a common denominator. What do we want to do? Tejas? We want to eliminate the denominator. So how do we eliminate the denominator? We look, what would be the common denominator if we had to choose one? Four. Four. So now we're going to multiply everything by what would be the common denominator. So now we're going to cancel these out. So we're going to have x plus 2 goes into 4 twice. So x plus 2 is equal to 12x. Now we solve for x, so I would subtract this one over. So we have 2 is equal to 11x and then divide by 11. So x is equal to 2 over 11. Huge difference, right, between simplifying versus solving. So this whole unit now is about solving. This whole unit now is about solving. All right, let's do some problems. So we're going to keep it Algebra 1 at first. Okay, remember, when we're solving, we do not want to create a common denominator. Our, uh, our um, plan should be to eliminate the denominator. So how would I eliminate the denominator here? What do I do? Layla? Good. We're going to multiply every single term by what would be the common denominator, which is 6. Now 2 goes into 6 three times, so we're left with a 3x. 6 goes into 6 once, so minus 1 is equal to 60. And then we solve. So we're going to have 3x is equal to 61, x is equal to 61 over 3. If you can simplify that fraction, you should. I would not recommend you changing it into a decimal or mixed number. Leave it improper.
Okay, once again, this is an equation. Our directions are to solve. We want to eliminate the denominator. 6, 8, 24. What would be the common denominator for 6, 8, and 24? 24. 24. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to multiply everything by 24. On both sides. Then we cross simplify. 6 goes into 24 four times, so we have 4 times the quantity of x minus 2 left. Then we have 8 goes into 24 three times, so we're left with 3 times 3x. And then we have 24 goes into 24 one time, but now be careful here. We're going to subtract the whole quantity of 3x plus 8. Do I need those parentheses? Absolutely, and that's going to equal 24. So now I'm going to distribute what I can. We're going to have 4x minus 8 plus 9x minus 3x minus 8 equals 24. So I distributed in that negative. So now let's combine our like terms. 4x plus 9x is 13x minus 3x is 10x. And then we are going to have a negative 8, and another negative 8 gives us a negative 16 equals 24. We solve this, we're going to have 10x is equal to 40, so x is equal to 4. Okay, next one. One third y squared plus five twelfths y equals a half. Okay, so now again, don't get nervous by the y squared. We are still, this is an equation, we are going to eliminate the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to multiply everything by 12. 3 goes into 12 four times, so we're left with 4 times y squared. 12 goes into 12 once, so we're left with a 5y. And 2 goes into 12 six times, equals 6. So now we're at 4y squared plus 5y equals 6. What are we going to do here? Factor. We're going to factor. In order to factor, what must it equal? Zero. Zero. So we are 4y squared plus 5y minus 6 equals 0. If you factor this, you are going to get a y plus 2 and a 4y minus 3. So now we get y equals negative 2 and y equals 3 fourths. Okay? One third y squared, 5 twelfths y. Okay, are we ready to bring it up to Algebra 2? So this was all Algebra 1 still. Are we ready to bring it up to Algebra 2? So now in Algebra 2, what I'm going to do, it's the same exact idea, it's the same exact concept, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put variables in the denominator. So what does that look like? 2x minus 9 over x minus 7 plus x over 2 equals 5 over x minus 7. We're going to follow the same thing we were doing. We are now going to look at our denominators and we're going to ask ourselves, if we had to make a common denominator, what would that common denominator be? Wouldn't it be x minus 7 and 2? So 2 times the quantity of x minus 7. 
So that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply every single term by two times the quantity of x minus seven. So here the x minus sevens cancel, so I'm left with two times the quantity of two x minus nine. Here the twos cancel, so I'm left with x times the quantity of x minus seven. And here the x minus sevens cancel, so we have two times five. So now we distribute. So we're going to have 4x minus 18 plus, distribute again, x squared minus 7x equals 10. We're going to combine our like terms. So I'm going to keep my x squared first. Then I have a 4x and a negative 7x, which gives us a negative 3x. And then negative 18 equals 10. Once again, what am I going to have to do? Factor. We're not getting away from this factoring. Right? Now what we want to do is we want to bring that 10 over. So I'm going to subtract that 10. So we're going to have x squared minus 3x minus 28 equals 0. We factor. So we're going to have an x minus 7 and x plus 4. When we solve, we're going to have x equals... 7x is equal to negative 4, but we are not done. Because I have variables in the denominator, this isn't an issue if there's no variable in the denominator. If it's all just numbers in the denominator, we're good. But because we have now variables in the denominator, right, we now have the opportunity for something to be undefined, right? What happens, what makes um, a fraction or um, a rational expression undefined? Layla? A zero in the denominator. A zero in the denominator. So now what's going to happen is once we solve everything, we have to check our answers. And this is called check for extraneous solutions, meaning for solutions that don't fit in the domain, meaning solutions that will make our denominator zero. So now I had two solutions. I had an x equals 7 and I have an x equals negative 4. So now we're, we only care about the denominators. We only care about the denominators. So looking back, if I have x equals negative 4, is everything okay still? Yes, but if x equals 7, what happens? Don't we get a denominator of 0? So can x equals 7 be an answer for us? No, we have to reject that. And the only time you have to consider this is when? there is a variable in the denominator. The only time you have to consider checking your solutions here is when there is a variable in the denominator. If there's no variable in the denominator, you do not have to worry about the extraneous solutions because there will not be one. So we're just left with x equals negative 4. Okay, you guys try this one.
So what should have been your starting point here? Philip? Excellent. Your starting point should have been to factor the denominators. How many people did that? Okay, good. And then once you factor the denominator, what are you going to multiply everything by? What are you going to multiply everything by? Noah? Uh, 2 times y minus 4 times y plus 3. You got it. You should have then multiplied everything by 2 times the quantity of y plus 3 times the quantity of y minus 4. Anybody need more time here? Okay, what did we get? Who got an answer? Sorry, Tejas? Negative six. Y equals negative six. I got that. Anybody want to see me do this? Okay. So we should have started off by factoring the denominator. So we have two times the quantity of y plus three. And then we should have factored this. So this is a y minus four and a y plus three. And the last one's just a y minus 4. So now we are going to go ahead and we are going to multiply, like what Noah said, everything by 2 times the quantity of y plus 3 times the quantity of y minus 4. We're going to do that everywhere. So here the 2's cancel and the y plus 3's cancel, so we are left with 5 times the quantity of y minus 4. Here the y minus 4's and the y plus 3 cancel, so we're left with negative 2 times the quantity of 2y minus 4. And now here we have the y minus 4's cancel, so we have 3 times 2 times the quantity of y plus 3. All right, now we distribute in. When we distribute in, we're going to get a 5y minus 20. Now, be careful here. You're not distributing in a 2. What are we distributing in here? A negative 2. So this is a negative 4y and a positive 8. And here I'm distributing in a 6. So that's a 6y plus 18. Now we combine our like terms, so I'm going to have 4y and a negative, uh, sorry, 5y and a negative 4y is y. And then I have a negative 20 and 8 is a negative 12 equals 6y plus 18. Um, it really doesn't matter which way you go here. If you subtract the 6y, you're going to get a negative 5y and then add the 12 you're going to get a positive 30. And then divide by negative 5, you get a negative 6. Kai, you good? Yeah. Okay. All right, now let's talk about proportions. Who remembers what you're allowed to do with proportions? Who remembers what you're allowed to do with proportions? Yeah, for proportions, we cross multiply. So what is a proportion? It's when one ratio is equal to another ratio. 
Our proportion is when one ratio is equal to another ratio, and when we have that, we cross multiply. So my first example is 3 over x plus 1 is equal to 2 over x minus 4. How do I know this is a proportion? I have one ratio, equal sign, another ratio. That's what a proportion is. If I were to have put plus 3 on either side, like if I had done this plus 3, would this be a proportion? No. A proportion is just one fraction equals another fraction. Yes, Philip? What if you just simplified both sides of the equation to be a fraction and just plus, plus one side from there? Would that be considered a fraction? If I did a plus three right here, and then you, and then you could, like made a common denominator. And then and then, can you do that sure, but it would take a lot of time, so depending. But yes, you could. The question is, can I do that? Yes, absolutely, you can do that. Well, then you just have a negative 3 over here. So then you'd have 3 over x plus 1 minus 3. Same thing. Well, if they both had a 3 and they could cancel, then sure. But you're thinking of very specific situations here, right? That's not very likely to happen. Okay. So here's our proportion. We are now going to multiply this proportion. So now we're going to be 2 times the quantity of x plus 1 equals 3 times the quantity of x minus 4. Distribute in. So we're going to have 2x plus 2 and 3x minus 12. Then we solve. So I'll subtract the 2x and I'll add the 12. And when we do that, we're going to end up with x is equal to 14. Do I have to check for extraneous solution here? Yes. How? Why? How do you know? Danny? Good. There's a variable in the denominator. So we have x is equal to 14. Is that a problem in either of the denominators? No. So we are good there. So let's say you get like a single answer and it doesn't work, your answer is just undefined. It would be no solution. Yeah, no solution. So let's say we have x minus 3 over 2 equals 1 over x minus 4. Is this a proportion? Yeah, one fraction equals sign another fraction. Can we cross multiply? Absolutely. So let's cross multiply. But when we cross multiply, I have x minus 3 times the quantity of x minus 4 is equal to 2. Can I do this? Who said no? Philip? Good. No, we are not allowed to do that. Why? When's the only time we're allowed to do that? When it equals 0. Why are we allowed to do it when it equals 0, but we're not allowed to do it when it equals any other number? How come we're only allowed to solve when it equals zero and not any other number? Noah? Because it wouldn't be consistent since there's an infinite number of ways to multiply it to two. Yeah, so when this is equal to zero, right? And then I say, okay, well, this one's going to equal zero and this one will equal zero. Why am I doing that? Because if I have two numbers multiplied together, if one of them is zero, isn't the whole product zero? That's why we're allowed to do it when it's zero here. That's why we're allowed to solve when it's zero. Because if I have two factors being multiplied together, if either one of those factors are zero, then the whole product is zero. That's why we can do that. But by me saying, okay, let's make x minus 3 equal to 2, all right, I'll figure out what that is. I'll figure out that, you know, x is 5. But does 5 times anything here still make it 2? I'm sorry, 2 times anything here still make it 2? No, that doesn't work. So that whole idea of solving these factors equals setting these factors equal to zero uh, equal to a number only works when that number is zero. So if I can't set these each equal to zero, what do I have to do? If I can't set each of these factors equal to zero, what should I do? Zoya? 
you got it, we need to FOIL this out, so or double distribute whatever it is that you do. So we have x times x is x squared, x times negative 4 is a negative 4x, negative 3 times x is a negative 3x, and negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12. So now we have x squared minus 7x plus 12 equals 2. And just like Zoya said, we need to now move this 2 over. So we are x squared minus 7x plus 10 equals 0. Now we factor x minus 5, x minus 2. Now can I set these factors equal to 0? Absolutely. x minus 5 equals 0, x minus 2 is equal to 0, x is equal to 5, x is equal to 2. Do I need to check for extraneous solutions? Yes. Why do I need to check for extraneous solutions? Tejas. Because there is a variable in the denominator. Do either of these solutions change anything for us? No. So they both work. All right, you guys try this one. Okay, what did you get? Who well, has an answer for me? Michael? Yay, x equals plus or minus 3. Does anybody need to see me do it? Okay. All right, let's cross multiply. So we're going to have 10x squared, right? Because x times x is x squared. You're just being happy? Oh, okay. Does anybody else need to see me do it? Okay, so guys, you have an option right now, but consider this option because I personally feel like one option is better than the other, but you need to really think about it. So right now, we can continue this lesson or I can stop. If I stop now, I'm going to give you back your tests. You will not have homework tonight and I will finish the lesson tomorrow. Or, or... We can continue this lesson today. I can finish this lesson today. You will not get your test back today, but you will also not have homework because tomorrow I will give you back your, or Wednesday, not tomorrow, right? Wednesday, I will give you back your test and allow you to work on the homework in class. So which one do you want? Do you want to, all right, do you want me to repeat the two options one more time? Or do we all know the options? All right, who wants option one, meaning we're going to stop now? That was not the better option, guys. Okay, but majority rules, but now you do 